now we are going to discuss the solenoid solenoid consists of a long enamel wound on long enamel oil wound in the form of a helix where the neighboring turns are closely spaced so each turn can be regarded as a circle or a circular loop you can say this is a solenoid this is enamel oil enamel means it is insulated insulated oil clear wound in the form of helix helix means it is spiral spring type right now <coughs> Um, the neighboring turns are very close to each other so that you can take each and every turn as a circular loop. This is a solid. This is a uh, enamel oil that is insulated oil. And two neighboring turn is very closely spaced, so that you can assume each turn as a circular. Turn. And by long solenoid, we mean that the length of the solenoid, the length of the solenoid is large compared to its radius. If this is radius, then compared to this radius, the length of the solenoid is very large. Then we can say the solenoid is uh, long solenoid. The net magnetic field, the net magnetic field due to the solenoid is the vector sum of the fields due to all terms. We have already uh, calculated the field due to circular loop. Now, solenoid is number of solenoid, number of a huge number of circular loops and each loop produces magnetic field. Just take the sum, better sum of those magnetic fields. You get the resultant magnetic field at a point due to the solenoid. Let us consider a very long solenoid having small n number of turns per unit length. Small n number of turns per unit length. Small n is the number of turns per unit length. Let us say the current through the solenoid is I. I is the current through the solenoid. To each loop current is I. The magnetic uh, field inside the solenoid, inside the solenoid will be almost uniform, strong and directed along the axis of the solenoid. See here you can draw the magnetic fields, uh, magnetic fields like each and every uh, loop you can draw. Since the uh, solenoid is infinite solenoid, then field lines will be like this. These are the field lines and field lines will be entering the solenoid in that side from which the current looks like uh, and clockwise and field lines will exit through that side 
from which the current looks like anticlockwise direction. In this region, there is many different lines, but they are away from each other. That means they are uh, far apart from each other, which shows that field lines are uh, magnetic field is very small in these regions. So the field line outside the solenoid can be taken as zero, and inside the conductor, field lines are very closely spaced, which shows that field is very strong and inside this it is uh, parallel near parallel we have taken this uh, a finite solenoid if it is infinite very near large then this region continues now let us say this is the solenoid one part of the solenoid that means here One hemicircle is above the board and one is inside the board. This type, right? That means uh, half of the solenoid inside the board and half of the solenoid above the board. Right? And this dot pins in this position, current is flowing out of the board. And in this point, current is flowing into the hole. And we have to uh, find field at a point P, which is way inside the solenoid. This is the field point. Right? To calculate the magnetic field at a point P, which is well within the solenoid, we consider a rectangular loop. We consider a rectangular loop passing through the point. Let us say this is the closed loop Q R S T. Let us Q R S T is the closed loop passing through the point P. Now, according to Ampere's circuital theorem, B dot DL will be equal to mu naught I enclosed mu naught i enclosed. Let us say length of this circular loop is small n and breadth is b. Now this closed loop which is q r s t q this is the closed loop can be divided into four parts. That means you can uh, or you have to find b dot dl along q1 plus b dot dl along rs plus b dot dl along st plus integration b dot dl along pq which will be equal to mu naught i enclosed this is the closed path you have to find out the uh, b dot dl along this closed path and that integration is divided into four parts first we calculate b dot dl from q to r then we will find b dot dl uh, from r to s then we will uh, find the b dot dl from s to t and finally we have to find out the b dot dl along the path tq now see here we have already told that uh, magnetic field inside the solenoid is along the axis, right? Therefore, along QR path, B and DL is parallel. Along QR path, B and DL is parallel. Therefore, we can write integration B DL cos 0 through the path Q to R. And now RS path, along the path RS, B is along the axis, right? And DL is perpendicular along this side that means B and DL is perpendicular therefore in this case you can write B DL cos 90 degree RS or QS rather you may say if uh, this point is well outside the solenoid then up to this 
up to the solenoid B and DL is perpendicular but outside the um, conductor outside the conductor B is 0 also uh, outside the solenoid B is 0 although <coughs> similarly uh, through the path S to T B is 0 and through path TQ again B is perpendicular to DL therefore from TQ we can say B DL cos of 90 degree which is equal to mu naught N L I I enclosed is the total current enclosed by the closed loop now length of the loop is small n therefore number of terms inside the loop is small n into small n into l by unit length number of terms is small n therefore number of terms number of terms inside the closed loop is n into small s since small n is the length of the loop in current through each loop is i therefore total current inside this loop is nl into i or from here you can write b integration dl q to r plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 is equal to mu naught n l i cos 90 0 cos 90 0 and this is also 0 3 terms are 0 therefore we may write b into l integration dl from q to r integration dl from q to r that is length of this side that is length of qr which is l therefore b into l is equal to mu naught l l i or we can say b is equal to mu naught l l i by l that means mu naught n i mu naught n i is the magnetic field inside a long solenoid.